And now former Premier League referee Mike Dean has revealed that he failed to correct a mistake in a match to save his friend and fellow official, Anthony Taylor, from extra grief. <laughs> Dean was the video assistant referee for Chelsea's 2-2 draw with Spurs in August last year. And just before a late Harry Kane equaliser, Chelsea felt they should have been a penalty after Romero pulled uh, Curacela's hair, Mark Curacela's hair. Here he is speaking to a very own Simon Jordan about that very incident on his upfront podcast. Listen to this. I made a few mistakes as a VR. I missed the stupid hair pull at bloody Chelsea Tottenham, which was pathetic from my point of view. And it's one of them where if we had my time again, what would I do? I'd, I'd send Anshu to the screen. I think that, and the only reason he never sent to the screen, I've, I've said this before, is that he's cautioned both managers. He's had a hell of a game. It's been such a tough game end to end. And I said to Andy afterwards, I said, I just, I just didn't want to send you to the screen after what's gone on in the game. And Andy said, it doesn't matter what goes on in the game. You know, and and, I, and it's easy now. And again, I, I didn't want to send him up because I looked, he's, he's a mate as well as, as a referee. And I think I didn't want to send him up because he didn't want any more because what he's already had. And, and Andy's he's big and bold enough and ugly enough to know full well that if he's got on the screen, he's got on the screen for a reason. There you go, oh, Mike Dean there. Can't believe it. Yes, uh, Thomas Tuchel was the Chelsea boss at the time. Here's what he had to say about the decision. This is after the game. Since when can we pull hair on a football field? Is that a new rule that we pull hair and get away with it and then the next corner is played? It's a, it's a red card, that's it. Have you spoken to the officials? No, for what? For what? For what should I speak? It's, it's, honestly, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, will they take it back? Hopefully they come out and admit how bad performance this is because it's, 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 it's super decisive. The, the, in the build-up of the last goal, in the build-up we have a situation with Harry Kane and Rhys James, which is never, never in, a, in 30 years of Premier League a foul. We always say how physical this league is and shoulder against shoulder and not every physical contact is a foul. And suddenly we give decisive fouls away, and then we, we and, and then, when, but then they get away with pulling the hair. This is this is a, a very very poor performance. I'm sorry, and if my players are bad, I say the same. But I hopefully he can admit it at least after the match. There you go, Chelsea boss Thomas yeah. Tuchel. Rick, he believed that amazing. I'm amazed by that from Mike Dean. Absolutely amazed that you know something like that, and you can see why Tuchel's got the. <laughs> Got the hump with it because it's a disgrace, really, isn't it? When, <laughs> and especially what he's just said there, as a referee, you know, you, you got to be, you got to be, because he's your mate. I'm yeah. like, what? Well, look, I, I, you know, we all make mistakes, but I, I just, you know, the Arsenal sending off as well, the two yellows, just an absolute. I, I do joke. believe they should, they should change that rule. Where, <laughs> look, when you get a yellow card, it's not a problem. You no. can't look at VAR, but if it's going to result, another yellow card is going to result in a sending off. Then surely you can look at that. Uh, John is now from on this former Premier League manager now talk sport host Alan Pardew Alan morning morning Alan, Alan. morning gentlemen how are you doing oh we're good that's some um, Mike Dean that, that's whew. can you believe that Alan oh. that's some admission isn't it well I mean you know he's refereed games for me and um, <laughs> he he has a he has a kind of way about him I think he he, he also admits in the podcast that you know you have to you have to have a certain amount of arrogance well he definitely got that <laughs> um, and yeah. um, but i just think that's naive to say that and and actually when you when 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 the decision is let go okay or, or, or i don't want to cause more havoc for the referee i think the referee sent both of the managers off at the end of the game where they were almost coming to blows it wasn't yeah. that the same game so you know he's, he, what's happened there is just you know put fuel on the fire with that the, with that, with that, not making a decision. Can you imagine oh, that? Goodness. Can you imagine, Alan, if something's really at stake there? You know, maybe you're getting relegated, or or you're going for the yeah, title, absolutely. Chelsea, and and he comes out with that. Well, it's just you know, he's made a bit of a you know mockery, really, of that of the referees' union. I'm sure they must be incensed. You know, mm. uh, the the referees this morning with that admission, because I think genuinely, you know, and I've said this before. Probably the best refereed country in the world, you know, because when you go abroad, you do see some strange decisions, let me tell you. So, but, you know, the VAR thing and everything else, there's a, there's a real spotlight on them. And then Mike Dean comes out and says that, oh, yeah. you know, I see, you know, it's, it's, it really is put pressure on everybody at the weekend, probably. Well, the, the pa your old club Palace against Arsenal, that was, that was bizarre, the two yellows there. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I, I was at the game and... Um, even the throwing, I was a little bit 
Yeah, okay. I know this new rule, you've got to speed it up, speed it up. But it was actually throw-ins that had gone on before that had taken a while. And he and he just had managed, you know, and it just happened to be him. It could have been somebody else, I think. Um, but, you know, it, 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 it's tough, isn't it? And Ray, you tell you, you know, it, it, there's nothing worse than sitting in the dressing room of a player who you feel has been aggrieved because mm. he's been sent off for, you know, literally nothing. Surely they should look at that, Alan, because, you know, when it is resulting in someone being sent off, or even if it's a, it's a second yellow car, surely they can look at that VAR because it's going to affect the game, which it did, didn't it, in the end? I know Arsenal held on and they sat Only deep. Jeff. Just about, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But really, if they did drop points there, then you're looking at a decision again that they've got it wrong. Yeah, I mean, that, that rule has been for some time that, you, you know, you can't challenge that second yellow card. And I've always thought that was wrong. Um, and I still believe it is wrong. Mm. So I do agree with you 100%. Al, looking ahead to the weekend, some crackers. Uh, I, I'm really looking forward to Newcastle. What a game against Liverpool. I didn't realise Liverpool's record against Newcastle is brilliant. Yeah, actually, it was my very first game as Newcastle manager, Liverpool. Um, we beat them 3-1 that, that day. But, you know, so it's got nice memories for me, that fixture. But, you know, Newcastle at the moment, a different different team to the team I had. They're way, way above technically and physically the team that I manage there because they've invested well and uh, the manager's got them in a great, great place. They're going to have to bounce back after the defeat at Man City. So I expect them to come out firing Sunday, Newcastle, and that place will be rocking. It'll be a great fixture. What a great game. Yeah. Another great game for me, Al, is uh, Brighton-West Ham. West Ham had that brilliant result against Chelsea. I thought Chelsea played well first half, but obviously yeah. got that brilliant result. And Brighton, what another great start to the season. After losing some big, big players in that midfield, especially McAllister, Casado, but they seem to just keep rolling on, didn't they? And, and Mitoma... He could be another player that is oh, on everybody. What a goal. That was <laughs> he could be on everybody's lips next uh, transfer window, or even next summer, saying, "Well, he he could be another eighty million pound player, hundred million pound yeah. player." And Brentford didn't they break their own transfer record this week, or thirty five million or something for a player? You know, uh, and they and on a young Uruguay, Uruguayan, I think they start trying to sign as well. So they're obviously just rolling on, rolling on. I mean, I can't remember a team getting so much good news week after week after week. Do you remember they, they played uh, Man City at the back end of last year and Pep was raving about the managers, the best football in the Premier League, blah, blah, blah. And it's just keeps, it just keeps rolling on for Brighton. But they can't believe their luck, the fan. What about, uh, obviously, the, we, we were talking about today and, and to, uh, Ivan Tony and Brentford, talking about Brentford, mm. uh, can't, you know, can't play to January. Would you take a chance and try and buy him now and get him maybe a little bit cheaper knowing he's not available to January, Feb? I don't know. I don't know about that because, you know, at the moment, I think this last week is going to be uh, really kind of, there's going to be a lot of movement. You know, the Salah, Salah bid this morning oh, from the Saudi Arabian. You know, anything could happen this week because... You've seen what the uh, Saudi Arabia nation did with golf. That, that really money is no object. So they're throwing bombs on the Premier League. And uh, who, who's to say they won't bid for Tony, for example? So, you know, I think there's a lot to play out this week. And I, and I know if I was a Brentford fan, I really hope that they, they keep him. Because Brentford, like Brighton, what, what a great, great club they are at the moment. Yeah. Uh, don't forget, Alan Pardew is back on Sunday, 6.30. What? No, I was just about to ask Alan a question. Go on then. Al, I just want to. I noticed you were sitting. Oh, you're next... still busy with your poem. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed you were sitting next to Gareth the other night at the uh, Sellers Park. Um, mm. Do you know any inkling? I'm sure it's the obvious people like Saka and people like that. But any inklings who, who could be a surprise coming up the uh, the squad coming up? Um, well, obviously, he's a good friend of mine, Gareth. I would be uh, not uh, telling. T- too many secrets <laughs> no, no, that we no, went no. on talked about. I, that's why I never I asked you, Alan. One, one conversation <laughs> we did have, which was interesting, was about um, Eddie Nikita, who I thought played very, very well mm. and was so unlucky with a dink. You know, he got too much on it. I mean, Alan, Alan Brazil would have just dinked that in. It no problem. <laughs> but I, I actually thought he reminded me of Ian Wright. I couldn't, you know, I said mm. to him, what do you think, Gareth? You've had him in the juniors or, or whatever. Yeah. He said, yeah, we really like him. He's, you know, Lively. lively, yeah. Lively, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I really hope it's a breakthrough season for that kid. 
Yeah. You know, he, he, he looks the part. He, he's a bit like Saka. He's a nice person. And good luck yeah. to him. Well, he's going to get a lot of chances, yeah. isn't he, playing that yeah. Arsenal side? That's sure. for sure. See, I told you it was a good question. <laughs> yeah, well done. That was a great Cheers, question. Alan. Yeah, well, he's not, he's, he's not going to grass his, his <laughs> mate up, is he? Dear, oh dear. Well, he hasn't. He's just given us a bit of insight. Yeah, not maybe what you wanted. Nah, there we go. Uh, yeah. Al, listen, uh, enjoy Sunday, mate. Thank Cheers, you. Al. Yeah, D- yeah, call him. 6 5, me and Jason Cundy this week. Oh, lovely. lively. Talk Sport Breakfast with Alan Brazil. Thursday and Friday morning, 6 till 10 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.